Cindy McKeon. I enjoyed that. Very good talk. I didn't know we were going to get into uh, talking about the, the gin and, and uh, the, the demons and things like that for that long, but I really in, in, enjoy those discussions. And so as, as much as we want to um, talk about um, the good stuff, we have to talk about the bad. It kind of goes hand, hand in hand. So uh, just a couple quick updates. Uh, so Christy is asking uh, in the comment section. She says, when I order your new album tomorrow, True Seeker, will you autograph it for me? Yes. Uh, all the pre-order albums will be autographed. I'm going to be autographing all of them. Um, you'll get a digital download early. You also get um, your name entered into a drawing to win uh, True Seeker Wall Tapestry. So all this will be autographed. Um, also, too, I have something I want to talk about as well. We're talking about like talking about the good and the bad. Sometimes we don't want to do it. We don't want to acknowledge the bad because we feel like we give it power, those type of things. Um, I have to talk about an encounter that I had this weekend. Um, and I don't know if I should do just a whole video on this and just give it, you know, or make this a segment. I don't know. But we talk about psychedelics from time to time. We talk about um, using mushrooms. I have so many friends who uh, smoke marijuana. Uh, they use DMT. Uh, people doing vape pens of, of CBD oil, um, all this stuff. So this is something that's part of our conversation. You know, we always use discretion when talking about any of it. I've been head over heels for my experiences with um, um, magic mushroom, psilocybin, uh, the plant teacher. But when it comes to marijuana, um, I'm at a different place with it because of my past. Uh, I've tried. I, I don't use marijuana. Um, I've tried to of recent and uh, it just doesn't work out. Um, I smoked marijuana as a as a teenager, like very young, like almost every day of when I was a, like anywhere from like 12, 13 years old, the first time doing it. All the way up to when I was 16, we'd smoke, you know, certain certain years or months would go every day. But um, it took me to a place um, outside of myself. If my situation was bad, I didn't like the person who I was. I didn't like um, my, my, my mom. We had a bad relationship. We, you know, very unstable. Um, and marijuana was my escape. It was my way to... Uh, take me out of the present moment to uh to a place where nothing mattered a place where i could go to to get away this this high this th that i would get from smoking weed as a teenager um and so i smoked weed for many years until one day i uh I, there was no way i could quit man i just it was just something i was doing every day until one day i smoked um some marijuana and ended up having a panic attack my uh heart started racing couldn't breathe. Um, I thought, uh, I was just hearing noises in my head. Um, crazy stuff. I turned pale. I'm gasping for breath. Couldn't breathe out of my, my throat. Felt like my esophagus was like swollen shut. You know what I'm saying? I can only breathe barely through my nose. And I had to like manually make myself breathe. And this went on for three hours straight. This was back in, uh, 2000. Uh, and, 1999 2000 it happened to me and so i quit smoking after that i had this crazy panic attack i'm crying thinking i'm gonna die right and so and this was all just smoking weed and i did it every day up to that point so i took a break and then i smoked again with with some friends uh maybe just a, maybe two three weeks later um went over to some friends house there smoking i hit it one time and hit it kind of reluctantly because i didn't want that to happen again i just took one hit just let me get a little buzz same thing happened in my body. It's like I had this weird allergic reaction type deal. You know, my heart started racing, couldn't breathe, went on for three hours. My heightened senses of smell, like I could smell stuff far away, like gas. And it was just, it was not good. It was not fun. Um, and so that's why I don't really smoke marijuana. That's what happened to me, um, you know, 18 years ago now. So I've had a couple occasions where I've tried to smoke within the last couple of years. I've had some friends who do it and I'll take a hit here, take a hit there. Um, and it's like reluctant as well. Um, and I can kind of feel that, that fear coming at times uh, when I've done it. I never, you know, smoked a whole bunch. There's always been like a hit here, a hit there or whatever. 
Um, so just this weekend, I had some friends come by and uh, they were smoking, had a bunch of weed, marijuana, um, and they also had a gummy, a uh, marijuana THC gummy, medical use only is what it said on there. So uh, I didn't smoke any, so I uh, I took a little bitty piece of that gummy. I ate um, the ear, just a little piece of it. And then, you know, 30 minutes later, I was feeling okay, you know. And then so I, I had a beer or two or three, and then I went back to the gummy, took off a bigger piece of it, chewing on it, sucking on it, whatever, getting it in my gums, making sure I absorb it. And um, within an hour later, one of my friends left. Another friend uh, was leaving, but at that time I could feel it kicking in. I was feeling really weird in my spirit, feeling really weird in, in, in my body. And um, he left. And just a few minutes after he left, man, I felt that panic attack kick in. My heart started to race. Um, I couldn't breathe. I started turning pale, sweating. And this is after me just being relaxed and just all of a sudden it's happening to me. So I called my friend back on the phone. Um, I called him back and said, hey, dude, I need you to come back. I'm having a panic attack, man. So he said, all right, bro, be right there. So he turns around and comes back. And uh, and it was not fun. The same thing happened to me, which happened to me about 18 years ago. But even worse, man, your mind's playing tricks on you. Um, but then again, like it's not all in, in, in your head. Like if it was like I can in the spirit realm, I'm pretty strong. I can do things. I can make things happen. I've been places on both sides. So I, I have a confidence to kind of move around in, in the spirit realm and make things stop or start things or have encounters and experiences when I want. So um, I couldn't. I couldn't hear like this thing had total control of me, man. I couldn't couldn't breathe. My I was throwing up. My esophagus was was swollen, weird pains in my body. My back started to ache. All of just taking a, these little bitty bites of this uh this uh, THC gummy. And uh, so he came back and, you know, I was trying to get him to pray with me. You know, that was the only thing that kind of uh, would make it stop. But even still, man, to know that, like, I couldn't even control it by speaking speaking it out or, or, or co commanding it or whatever. It was something that I was kind of locked into and it wasn't fun. It would, it would maybe be fun if, uh, if you, it was just all mental. Like if you can, it was just all in your head and you can let it take you and do whatever. And, and for a lot of people, it's like that. But I got on, I did some research afterwards, man. The majority of people who are eating these, uh, these, uh, weed gummy bears are having these in encounters. They're like, uh, feel like they're doing cocaine by eating just a little piece of a gummy bear. Their heart starts racing. They start sweating and they can't breathe. That's not fun by any means, especially when your mind is so far gone on, off of the high of the THC. And then that starts actually happening to your physical body and you can't stop it. Man, it was demonic, man. It was straight up demonic. I know some, and I'm not like condemning it, but I'm warning people like, be careful, man. You know what I'm saying? We talk a lot about, I have a lot of friends who, who smoke weed every day and they're fine. I know people who eat gummy bears all the time, but then I, no, I don't. I don't know anybody who eats the gummy bears all the time. Let me rephrase that. I have people who smoke weed every day and they won't mess with gummy bears because it does that to their body. So be careful uh, eating those edibles like that, man. Uh, it was it was straight demonic. Wasn't pleasant. Um, my buddy, he, he came back and he prayed with me. I was listening to worship music, you know, but then he... Uh, he was kind of tripping too. So it's always hard when people are, you know, they can kind of make it better or worse, man. But, uh, I, I barely pulled my composure together when my wife and daughter walked through the door and this was like at midnight, they were coming home. And this was, I think we did this like eight thirty, man. And, um, uh, I barely pulled my composure together right before my wife and daughter. And like the worst fear would be my daughter, wife and daughter coming home and me tripping on, on a drug. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's a fear of mine, you know? And it wasn't that the fear did it. And my, Watchman was telling me and other people tell me it's all in your head, bro. You know, you, 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 your brain is that powerful that you created that in your body started reacting. No, in my brain, I was cool. I'm laid back. I'm strong. I'm more than a conqueror. Like there's things that, that I'm confident in that I have no fear over. There's no fear, uh, fear and love because perfect love casts out all fear. But when it's your body going through that stuff, I had no control over it. So I will warn you for that. You know, people hear me talking about my mushroom encounters and they get excited. They want to, you know, it piques their interest. I still give my warnings with that kind of stuff, but especially I wanted to share my story with that. And I don't, 
I don't like talking about this stuff. I don't like knowing that maybe I'm, I made a mistake. I definitely learned from it. You say that every trip or even a bad trip or whatever is a learning experience or a learning curve. I definitely learned from it. I thought I was going to die. Like you're talking about your life flashing before your eyes and making sure you're on the right path and you're doing the right things. And man, I got to see how I was just like, you know what I'm saying? Like a um, daisy with my life and like chores around the house and little things, man, that, that just kind of, I just kind of push off that I need to be doing. So I definitely would use all experiences in my life to, to kind of see, uh, to kind of learn from it, learn and, and kind of build on top of it. So yeah, good came from it. You know what I'm saying? I had to evaluate my life because I thought I was going to die. Literally, I know I knew I wasn't. The only thing that helped me is because I've been through it before. Even though it was 18 years ago, like I've been through it before. But I'm reading all these comments online of people having similar encounters and they all they call in the ambulance. And trust me, I wanted to. I wanted to. But, you know, you just had to kind of ride it out, man. Um, it wasn't good at all. Just just because of the body, not not. Even the mental stuff, the mental stuff was crazy too, but just the, the body, man, what it does, you sit, you're sitting down perfectly calm and your heart is just, I can't breathe. You have to make it. It's crazy. It's demonic, man. I'm telling you. Um, I just had to, I just had to say that, man. I just had to let everybody know what, what happened with that. So, and I'll say this, this is why, this is why it's not, it that it's not for me. I'm not saying that it's not for you. I'm not saying that you, you can't do it. That's between you and God, right? But for me, it's not for me. Um, and so I talk about, um, I talk about weed playing a role in my life. To um, um, weed playing a role in my life to pull me out of my my situation to be a form of escape escapism to make everything a little bit more tolerable i got friends who eat pills to do that to this day they eat a lord tab a xanax the kids are crying the wife's complaining they eat a pill hey everything's good bro you know what i'm saying and i have people i know people who smoke weed to this day and it helps them cope with life that was that was my form of escape when i was a teenager but i, I have to be 100 percent honest like my my form of escape now I, I still have a form of escape it's jesus it's the presence of the holy spirit um when i feel like i i don't belong when i feel scared when i feel oppressed i get in the presence of god i spend time with jesus and he makes everything okay he is my place of rest refuge my place my he is he is my my strong tower my fortress from from the enemies he will protect me watch over me send forth angels to, to guide me protect me like that is my place that I go to, to hide, to cope with life, right? It's, is in the presence of Jesus. And so, um, weed being a form of escapism for me, I don't know what it is for you. You may do it just for fun. You like the way it makes you feel, but weed was that for me. Um, now it shows you when that happens to you, like, I don't want to leave the present moment. The power is in the present moment. Why would we want to escape it? I have a beautiful family a loving wife, amazing daughter. Why would I want to run from that? Why would I want to, to hide from that? And so maybe it's just for me, but I know it's not. There's a lot of people resonating with this, but the power is in the moment. We can't run from it. That's where all the power is. That's what we create. And so for, to, to take you out of that moment, um, you know, just be careful, guys. That's all I'm going to say. There's a, and I'm going to say this, man. Like, I, like I said, I have people who, who, who do this, um, and they're okay with it and they can, and I don't judge you, man. That's between you and God. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm looking for this, this writing that, um, that spoke to me, uh, some time ago. I'm going to try to read it here. It's kind of long, but I'm going to read this. This is a a, a writing from G.D. Watson. Let me make sure this is it. Okay, here we go. This is called Others May, You Cannot. And um, the Holy Spirit has standards upon some, some people's life, and that's what causes us not to be able to, to do this type of stuff or not be 
comfortable in, in places that he has not called us to. He's put a seal upon us, man, to protect us and, and, and guide us. And so I'm going to read this. This is powerful. This was written in uh, the late 1800s, I believe, early 1900s. Um, and so it starts off with, the, with the, uh, a scripture. It says Matthew 16, 24 through 25. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Matthew 16, 24. If God has called you to be truly like Jesus, he will draw you into a life of crucifixion and humility. He will put on you such demands of obedience that you will not be allowed to follow other Christians. In many ways, he seems to let others believers let other believers do things which he will not let you do. Others who seem to be very religious and useful may push themselves up to be admired and scheme to carry out their plans, but you cannot. If you attempt it, you will meet it, uh, you will meet with such failure and rebuke from the Lord as to make your uh, make you sorely penitent. This is a older. <laughs> Others can brag about themselves, their work, their successes, but the Holy Spirit will not allow you to do any such thing. If you begin to do so, he will lead you into some deep mortification that will make you despise yourself in all your good works. This is good. I've been there. Others will be allowed to succeed in making great sums of money or in having a legacy left to them, or in having luxuries. But God may supply you only on a day-to-day -day basis. Because he wants you to have something far better than gold, a helpless dependence on him and his unseen treasury. The Lord may let others be honored and put forward while keeping you hidden in obscurity. Because he wants to pursue, produce some choice, fragrant fruit in you, which can only be produced in the shade. God may let others be great, but he will keep you small. He will let others do work for him and get the credit. But he will make you work and toil without others knowing how much you are doing. Then, to make your work still more precious, he will let others get the credit for the work which you have done. This is to teach you the message of the cross and humility. The Holy Spirit will put a strict watch on you with a jealous love, rebuke you for careless words and feelings or for wasting your time, which other Christians need, <laughs> never seem to be distressed over. So make up your mind that God is an infinite sovereign, is infinite and sovereign and has a right to do so as he pleases with his own and that he may not explain to you the thousands of things which may puzzle your reason and his dealings with you if you absolutely give yourself to be his slave he will wrap you in a jealous love and let other christian people say and do many things which you cannot however know this is the great secret of the kingdom when you are so completely possessed with the living God that you are, in your secret heart, pleased and delighted over this peculiar, personal, private, jealous guardianship and management of the Holy Spirit over your life, then you will have found the vegetable of heaven, the high calling of God. Others may, you cannot. God allows people to get away with, with so much and they, they, they don't seem to have that same moral compass as you. Other people are successful. Others can do things and get away with it. Even me. Don't take my grace. Don't take my um, liberty um, as a right to sin. If, if you have a strong conviction of the Holy Spirit within you and your personal, um, your personal sanctification process, you have to be obedient to that. No matter what I say, no matter what I tell you, you should be able to hear from God yourselves about the choices and the decisions that you make in your life. 
and um, you should you should be led of the Holy Spirit. Not we have many teachers that come and go in our lives, and we can learn so much from them. But you can only go as high as that teacher will, is. You can't go any higher. So, but if you're led of the Holy Spirit, you're led of God. He is your teacher. He will take you to places that uh, mind is not comprehended uh, and heart is not even thought of. The places that God will bring uh, you to, and and He will make that which is in you perfect he will finish that good work in which he started within you so do not get weary in 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 well-doing uh, learn to follow the voice of the holy spirit in your life to uh to lead you to greatness and so um with that being said man it's just about like i can't that's not for me you know it, it, that definitely relates not only to to the marijuana thing but definitely to the marijuana thing other people can smoke it i have other other christians who they say it helps them be able to tap in with God. They smoke weed. They get into the spirit, whatever. They, they helps them get closer to God, helps them pray. And I have people who will debate me blue in the face about that. And that's between them and God. I can't. I've tried it. You know what I'm saying? And not just for the marijuana thing. It goes for so much stuff. So much stuff that uh, others get to do and others get to get, get away with but the holy spirit will not let you live with a clean conscience and this whole thing about this christian walk this spiritual walk whatever walk of life you're coming from it's about having clean hands and a pure heart in everything that you do let not your hearts be troubled but just walk with being open before god it says that king david would dance nakedly before god and in order to dance nakedly without restrictions without anything holding him back it's about not trying to hide anything from God, trying to hide anything, just like Adam. What was the sin? Adam tried to hide from God that he was naked. He tried to act like he didn't do it. So with us being open with God about everything that goes on in our mind, everything that's in our heart, all of our secrets, all of the things that we don't like about God or Christianity or religion or people or ourselves or our family, to be open with God. Don't carry it. Don't try to hide it. Don't try to keep it for yourself. Give it to him and let him wash it, let him clean it. And whatever it is in your life, if he gives it back to you, then that's a blessing. And you can walk forward with it. All of our idolatry, all of the things that we hold above him, trust me, give it up. All of your hurt, all of your pains, all of your wounds, your doubting, give it to him. And if he, if he meant for you to carry it, he'll wash it, he'll clean it up, and he'll give it back to you. So with that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. Thank you guys for supporting the work that I do. I'm coming right back on here with another broadcast. We're going to go live again. I got another interview to do. So I love each and every one of you guys. So take it for what it is, man. Everybody's in, in a different walk uh, in their life. I don't like to admit when I'm wrong or when I messed up. I'm a I'm an example for a lot of people. So I definitely don't like to to uh uh you know what I'm saying admit that. But for me to get my healing and and, and for me to you know what I'm saying to walk in. My victory, I have to do it as well. And so I have to admit when I admit when I messed up. I told my wife what I did. And it's not that it was bad, but you know what I'm saying? I just you can't hide anything, man. That's the whole thing. You have to just be open before God. So man, I love you guys. Thank you guys for listening to me rant and uh um thank you guys for being here for me when uh when I need when I need you guys. So thank you guys. Uh Thursday night, School of the Mystics. We're gonna be talking about what we're talking about right now how to hear the voice of God prophetically, respond to it, and find out the ways that God speaks to us in our lives. And so Thursday night, 7 p.m., School of the Mystics, TrueSticker.com. I love each and every one of you guys. I'll be back right after this. God bless and shalom.